חובת קביעת עיתים לתורה. Today's shear is in memory of Aaron Abba, Aaron Abba, Yosef Abba. I will look it up in a second. It's a really strong password. Yeah, all my kids know my father. <laughs> Avram Abba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today's shear is in memory of Avram Abba ben Yosef uh, Silver, whose uh, yurt site is uh, is today. So. We are on page 323, a new topic, Chovat Kviat Itim Torah. So, in fact, the, if you take a look at the um, Shulchan Arach, what should a person do after davening? A person should do exactly what we are doing, and that is Kviat Itim Torah. It's actually, this idea is based on a Pasuk in Yeshua, Source 1, Lo Yemush Sefer HaTor Zemi Picha, so you might think, oh, wait a second, we have to learn Torah 24 hours a day, because it says, right? So therefore, you're supposed to learn for 24 hours straight. However, as it's worthwhile pointing out, um, that perhaps that might be the you know, maximalist position, but the truth is, you can actually fulfill your chova of Talmud Torah by Kriyat Shema, Shachrit, and Arvi. By saying Kriyat Shema in the day and at night, you fulfill Yom Valayla, right? A little bit in a day, a little bit at night, we, it's as if it's considered Yom Valayla. It doesn't mean continuously, it means to have a, perhaps a uh, smatting of a little bit of Torah, both day and night. And in fact, that's what the Gemara in source number two discusses, the well-known Gemara, it's actually worthwhile reading it inside. If a person just learns a little bit at the end of the night, you fulfill the mitzvah of lo yamush sarsam picha because you can't have it cease. So if you have a little bit, then it's not ceasing day and night. So interesting, it doesn't say you need to, it says lo yamush, don't cease Torah sarsam picha and falala, right? So what does it mean? So if I have a little bit of, it didn't cease. Okay. So we see it's written in the negative, so therefore it's not, you'd think it's 24 7. No, 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 it's low yamush. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't prevent yourself from learning for 24 hours straight. The rise are astral low mobile fin amarats. But we can't tell this in front of an amarats. Why? Because what did an amarats say? Well, I'm done anyways. I'm done anyways, I'm finished. Why should I see after diving and learn? Why should I learn anymore? Why should I go to the rabbi's chair? Nothing. Forget it. I didn't do anything. Because I said Shema. Everyone says Shema. Who doesn't say Shema? Who doesn't dive three times a day, right? Dive three times a day. So that's why you shouldn't teach us in Amaret. How can you write right? something and expect people not to know it? Well, because remember, what do we see, by the way, what do we see from here? That it wasn't original. Uh, Amaret didn't look Gemara. They didn't look Gemara. No, we know there are a few things. That, no, the few things halacha is you shouldn't say shun halacha in front of an amaras because they're gonna not take in its proper context or appreciate it, Mister. But remember, remember how remember Gmar used to be oral, right? So like this, may, like what's like today where you have an app, we can have like the entire you know bavli on your phone in, instantaneously. Course, like, what do you mean it wasn't like there's that? There's people. No, it's Amar, free. You know, Amar, free. Have never learned Gemara in their lives, but know those. You know those. Right. I get those halach, like, Oh, I already learned. Remember the whole oh, idea whatever, of that whatever. everyone had an ability to have access to Jewish education into their teens is new. <laughs> the age of eleven or twelve, the exceptional people continued out in yeshiva. Everyone else went to work. You couldn't function in a in a society unless your children, especially your boys were working at the age of 12 or 13 when they had the, it was all physical right. labor. Once you're physically able to do, you went to work. That's it. You had your basic knowledge of Judaism and basic life skills. You went to work, right? Now, what do you mean? You know, it's, it's, you, it's also to go to work. You have to go to school, right? No, you have to go to school. And uh, if you're 16 or 18, one of the lies in Ontario, I don't even know. Okay. The Rav Amar mitzvah l'om Rav Amar. Ah, says Rav. No, it's a mitzvah to tell this to people. Shal ben Dama ben Achadosh Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Shmuel. Kegonani shli maridi Torah kakula malu malchach mayivani. This is a great gemara. What about me? I know the entire Torah. Am I allowed to learn Greek wisdom? Okay, exactly what is Greek wisdom? Is a fascinating conversation. It's a very interesting conversation. Did um, he did he bring Rashi? Just the actual thing he stops. Anyways, there's a there's a machlokah we shown in what exactly is chachma yavanit. Um, either it's referring to Greek wisdom in terms of philosophy. Um, others want to say that it's science. Um, that's this. Remember, in those days, philosophy was a science, right? Don't get confused. Now we don't. In most universities today, call it liberal arts. Yeah. Right? Arts and science used to be together. 
right? That's the so yeah, it could be seen as like philosophy, or others say no, that means science isn't like biology, whatever the case may be. Um, okay, this other. Yeah, anyways, we'll, we'll stop there. Kara Allah from Mikra Hazet, and therefore the Pasuk says, Loi Mershav Razam Ibicha, Hilmi Avalala. Se Ubadok Shasha Ina Lomina Yom Lomina Lila, Viloma Bocham Ivan. Yeah, sure, you want to be able to learn Greek wisdom? No problem. Go find time that's not there, not night. Because the Pasuk says, Loi Mershav Razam Ibicha. So again, he interprets it as this is a maxless position. Really, you should be learning as much as possible. So when you like to learn Greek wisdom, very good, but it's not there, not night. Which means? Never. Never. Upliga the Rabbi Shimon bar Nachmani. Upliga the says, "No, what do you mean?" Benish Mashas. Benish Mashas. Tamar Rabbi Shimon bar Nachmani. Pasuk says, "Ainu lo chov of la mitzvah ela bracha." This is amazing. He says, "No, you misunderstand this pasuk. This pasuk has nothing to do. Don't learn from here, halacha. First of all, this is divrei neviim. So divrei neviim, be careful what exactly you're deriving halacha from, mm-hmm. right? It's not uh, divrei Moshe Rabbeinu. But anyways, but nonetheless, he says, even that you can't even use it as an asmachta because this is a bracha. What's a bracha? This is beautiful." Beautiful. He saw Yeshua. He says, what does Yeshua want to do? Yeshua wants to learn Beis What else does Yeshua want to do? Shenemar Yeshua binu because Yeshua never left Moshe's tent. What did Yeshua want to do? He wanted to be in Kol Yeshua. And he says, because you're so beloved, you love Torah so much. What's the message? You're about to become a leader of the Jewish people. I don't have time to be a all day long. But because it's so beloved to you, it's as if you're learning 24 7. That's the. Okay. Um, I'll show you. Oh no, sorry. Says Rashi. Rashi says, He says that you're not going to forget, you're not going to forget the Torah that you learned from Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay. So I mean, he's, he's not learning any asmachta. He's not learning asmachta, right? He's saying it's like a message. It's a divrei bracha. What's a bracha? That you're not going to forget the Torah that uh, Moshe teaches you. Okay. What do we see from here? We see from here that there's a minimum that the Torah, that the, that the Chazal prescribed, um, and that is Rabbi Yocha in the name of Rashbi, uh, that the bare minimum is Kriyat Shema, and the maximum is, based on Rabbi Shmo, his response, was this essential 24-7 type of learning. Now, take a look at this. It says the Gemara in the Darim, turn the page, Amar of Gid Amarav, Haomer Ashkim Veshenet, a guy who wakes up in the morning and says, okay, I'm going to learn today. I'll learn this with Gemara. Neder gadol, nadar lo keyisol. It's a nether. If you wake up and say, I'm going to learn, it's a nether. Valo mushpa What do you mean? I don't understand. If I get up and says, oh, you know, it's, uh, what time is it now? It's 9.30. I'm going to go learn right now. The Gemara says it's a nether. That's why the Gemara is in Nidarim. What do you mean it's a nether? He's mushpa. So we have an Allah that says, if you're already commanded to do this, if a guy says, I'm going to keep Shabbos this week. Makes a nether. It's, a, it's not a nether. Right, right. Because why? You're already you're obligated to do this. Mushba already. Uh-huh. You already have, shall we say, taken on that nether. I'm making Kiddush Hashab. I'm going to recite it. I'm going to keep kosher today. It's not a nether. <coughs> right? Okay. Because you're already Mushba of Omer. Right? So, sends the Gemara. The ain't Shua Chalosh. We're not to put a Shua in a Shua. He says, how can you take an oath of, I'm going to learn Gemara today, and it's a nether. How can it be a nether? You say, you already took a nether to learn Torah. How could you then take another nether? Answer the Gemara, my Gemara, I'm very important. No, 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 maybe it's referring to them in the second. You're right, I can, I, I can learn Gemara in 10 minutes, in 20, the second. Maybe that's the nether, that it's this immediacy. No, no, no. Because since you could exempt yourself from the nether of Tamu Torah from Kriyat Mashach and Varvid, and that would fulfill your, so to speak, Jewish nether of Tamu Torah, by you saying you're going to learn now a Gemara, you are Mushma for that. Meaning, what do we see from here? That you're only obligated to recite Kriyat Mashach Varvid, right? And anything additional than that, you're not Mushma for Omer. So, the Ritva says, and it's exactly, in fact, what the, this is a very important Ritva, because otherwise, how, you just, how can you work? So, says the Ritva, Halo Mushram Harsinai, Maikam Ashlan, the Charlotte's Ruzay Nafshe, Hanid Rav Giddukam, meaning, 
What do you, when you take a nether, what do you do? You're zuzay nafshi. Let me do it right now. Right? Zuzay nafshi, inspire yourself. I'm taking it upon myself, right? So you think it's, 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 it's a, you're allowed to take on a nether. I'm going to learn right now because it'll give you zrizis. It'll give you expediency. Okay? So we see from here, this is a person who needs to work a little bit. Therefore, it can't be that literally means 24-7. It must be that you have the other time to do other things. So we're taking a net there. That's why it's chal. Because you're basically forcing yourself to learn. By the way, we do this. We see this all the time. Oh, yeah. Shloshim. I take it upon myself to learn the Masech. What do you mean? You've taken, always taken it upon yourself to learn everything, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, you take a yeshiva. Instead of doing money, they do office of a Torah, like learning, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a big mirch. I don't know if people actually really do it. Or they rush it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a little problematic sometimes. But anyways... It's easier to write a check sometimes than it is to complete what you're, what you're going to learn. But anyways, but sometimes it is very helpful. That, look, at the end of the day, if you have to do something because you're Yeshua, you're much more likely to do it. We know that. <laughs> you, know, you want to stay on pace with everybody? You want to stay on pace in a shear? So you know, often it's very helpful to have that type of pressure on you um, to get things done. Then you are obligated. And this is the famous Or Sameach, which is a brisk of Torah that I once heard many, many years ago. But we see from here, and this is what I mentioned in the beginning, that there's a minimalist and a maximalist. What is the, what's the scope? There are certain people who don't have an ability either because of cognitive ability, knowledge ability, time availability, right? But they, there's a minimum and there's a maximum. Most people fit in somewhere in that spectrum. Where does everyone else fit in? It depends, depends where you are and what age you're, what age you're in, what you're doing in life. But everyone fills in, fills in somewhere in that spectrum of Talmud Torah from minimum of, of Kriyat Shosh Arvid to the maximum. Right? No one's going to say, okay, I mean, you never hear, th- okay, you know, don't sleep to fill your mouth with that, right? You know, that's ridiculous. Someone never says that. I'm not saying we're great. Rabbi who didn't sleep a lot, right? That's, but you'll never see anybody who says, okay, I'm, it's us to sleep because it's mevatel your mouth with right? No one, no one, no one ever speaks that way. Okay, um, go to the end of this Or Sameach. <clears throat> <clears throat> and look at the top of page 325. <laughs> One, Gedr Hashayach Leklal, which is the minimum. And B, Mever Lekach, Yish Gedr Chiyuf Prati, Hamishtanim Adam Adam, Lefika Chav Yechoto. That again, that is, so you have this minimum, and then you have one which is totally dependent on a person's ability. You know, we have a different ability than our great grandparents did, perhaps, um, you know, a hundred uh, or so years ago. Okay. And that's the, okay, an important thing. That, let's go to number six, because number six is the most, there's a fancy name for this, and I always forget what it's called. It's a fancy English term, but I'll use the non-fancy English term, and that is when you die, you're going to be asked a certain amount of questions. There's a fancy English term for that. I can't what it is. Well-known Gemara, I'm sure you might have come across it before. Amarava, when a person faces heavily tribunal, Omrimlo, nasata v'natata be'emuna, did you deal faithfully in business? Number one question, were you faithful in business? Two, kavata itim la Torah, did you establish times for learning? Three, asakta bepriv rivia, were you engaged in bringing children? Tzipita Yeshua, did you await the salvation? Pelpata bechachma, this is a more difficult one to deal with. Did you deal with wisdom? Were you able to extrapolate things from one another? Vafilu hachi iyerat Hashem hiyotero in. Meaning, what he essentially is he saying is that when you, at the, when you face the heavenly tribunal at 120, you ask certain questions. And depending on, meaning, did you basically do what you're supposed to do in this world? Were you faithful in business? Not, do you make a lot of money? Were you honest in your business dealings? How much money you made? How, it doesn't matter. Were you honest? By the way, see from here, Talmud, not how much Torah did you learn. Did you just have set times for learning? That's the question that we're going to be asked at 120. Set, not, did you spend six hours of learning? No, did you have set times? Or was it like sporadic? Or was it like a five minutes here or five minutes there? No. Did you have set times for learning? We, we see here, did you await the salvation? Right? Do you really believe that tomorrow is going to be better than today? Right? This is, that's the idea of Lashana Haba. And also, we see here, it cho- not that you have children, but a sakta periphery, right? Did you really engage and try in order to have, um, to fulfill that mitzvah? Because otherwise, the Gemara gives an example, it's like you asked your servant to do something for you and basically wasted his time. 
right? And that's the message that God puts in this world. We have a mission to accomplish. Again, do we have to do the specific? We don't know what our mission is, but here's the guidelines. Here's the parameters that we should be thinking about in terms of accomplishing. And that's what Rashi says. Kavat itun latora lefiish adam tzirich lasuk b'derech eretz. Says Rashi, you have to do what's derech eretz, not mensh. Derech eretz means the way of the world. Which means you have to work, you have to learn Parnassah. Says Rashi, you have to learn So the, they're never going to ask you, did you learn all day? That's not, that's not the right question. The question is, did you deal with, do you have set times for learning? Shim ain derech eretz in Torah. There's no derech eretz. If you don't have work, you have no Torah. Hu tzrach li gbo itim la Torah, davar katsu. You have to have set times. Shlo yimshach kol yom la derech eretz. You can't have, you can't not spend the whole day working. All right, and we know this. They found, this is an amazing thing. They found, um, um, Unfortunately, they were destroyed, but they found the um, binding. The, the Nazis destroyed the bindings of what's called the Word Chopper Guild Torah Association. What do I mean? They have a bunch of wood choppers who lived oh, in Poland wood. who'd wake up at 4 3 in the morning to chop wood for the village. But they'd wake up a little earlier to learn as a chevra before they chopped wood for the village. So at 4 o'clock, 4 3 in the morning, right? Yeah. They learned for a long period of time. I, I, I doubt it. They probably chopped. They probably learned chopped wood, and they probably went to shul afterwards, right? For every, I guess chopping wood. Maybe I guess if it was hot and it was dark. I'm not so sure exactly what the advantage of chopping wood, but that's what they would do. So we see here that you know, did the, they uh, spend six hours learning? No, but they had these set times. That's whether it's the power of like a, a set shear and a dafiomi. That's the idea definitely behind us. Exactly what Rashi is referring to. And in fact, look at the Rambam. The Rambam says pasach the Rambam mechatamu Torah. Okay, whatever. Shizman zechayav liyot mugdar b'yom v'layla. That he says, however, your set time, the Rambam says, must be at the end of the night. You have a shir in the morning, you have a shir in the uh, evening as well. And that's the Rambam in Sar 7. Chav di kabol lo zaman l'tam u'tora b'yom u'balayla v'yigita bo yom v'layla. How much more do we have in this topic? Okay. Morning, Seder, night, Seder. Morning, Seder, night, Seder. The Gemara in Eruvin. Ravacha Bar Yaakov, that's why Afinu Seder is the weakest in Yeshiva. Right, obviously Afinu Seder is the weakest. That's nap. That's nap. Because you feel Yom That's nap Seder. Okay, it's a Gemara in Eruvin. But it actually brought down the Shukhan Aruch. So let's go to number 9 and number 10 and learn with that. Number 9. It says the Shukhan Aruch. By the way, this Simon again is the Simonim. Because that's the same word we're following, the name of the Shulchan Aruch. This is the next similar after the laws of Beit Knesset. Achar Shetzel mi Beit Knesset, Yedach the Beit Medrash. And they used to have two different Room. buildings almost, two different rooms, two different, right? V'yikba eit lil mod, v'tzaruch shoto eit ye kavua. Again, it needs to be, that's why one of the things that we try to do in jail is we do kavua, right? Tuesday, Thursday, we're trying not to break it. We really try. I'm not always perfect myself, but. We try. Even if it means, oh my goodness, I have a business deal at 9 a.m. that if I'm not there, I'm going to lose uh, the business deal. Is that time for learning? You don't change it. That's the... Okay? Even a guy who doesn't know how to learn. I spoke with this actually on, uh, on Rosh Hashanah. Right? That the guy... Yeah. She was a... I should have probably quoted this. Huh. Um, but what do we see from here? That a guy just goes and he's able to learn. Uh, he's able to learn. Um, just sit there. That's good enough. Or just pick up, uh, you know, art scroll. Pick up something. He says, at the end of the day, it's about That's an amazing. That's an amazing line, by the way. Um, okay, I'm going to read the Mishnah Bura. Set times every day. If it's Ones. And he couldn't make it up. He should replace it at night. Well, look at this. Look at this last line. Let's say it's an ones. Wife call, carpool, kid sick, uh, doctor's appointment, have the bris mila, you know, whatever it is. You have things that come up. At least, which by the way, one of the things that our Krapka instituted was that have it var halacha after minyan shacharit. Why? For exactly for this reason. Now, obviously people leave early, but for many people that could be their only Torah they learn the entire day. Right? So it, it's 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, but for some people that's, that's the idea behind. 15 minutes? <laughs> for some, that's the idea behind having a set time 
of Dvar Torah, that's the idea behind it. And I think there's tremendous value to that, which is one of the reasons why there's Dvar Halacha, or Dvar, or whatever it is, between Mincha Marv at night, this way you fulfill kind of both of these, and we see it's quite, uh, it's more important sometimes than even the amount is the regularity. Is that a word? Yes. Consistency? Is regularity a word? Consistency? Yes, Sounds right, regularity. Of, uh, of like, consistency? That's why the greatest record in baseball, we have to mention baseball today, is Lou Gehrig. The idea of, or, um, or, or, or sorry, Karibkin. That, that, that streak Iron will Man, never be broken, yeah, ever. Man yeah, the Iron Man streak will never be broken, because he played for how many years straight? Ten years straight without missing a game? Well, maybe way more. Twenty years straight without missing a game? Ten years is only 1,620. In less than those days, in less than those days. No, it was 100. It was? Yeah. Oh, yeah? But it was, it was like 15, 20 years old. Wow, 15 years, he never missed, that's like crazy. At least. At least, least. never missed a game. Probably more close. That's just amazing. That's pretty amazing. Okay, you should be so good to have the same kvirt as uh, 15 years straight and not miss a Seder, not miss even a 10 minute, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty amazing. That was a game, that's a three hour game, it's not like a 10 minute thing. Okay, shukrach everybody, have a thoughtful Thursday.